a blessed Lord's Day to you on this fifth Sunday of Easter and this service at which we observe the rite of confirmation for six young catechumens in our congregation. Welcome to visitors who have joined us. We pray that your time of worship with us is blessed as we gather before our God who first comes to us to serve us through his means of grace, word, and sacrament. We follow divine service, setting one beginning on page 151 in Lutheran service book. Uh, uh, please note that the choir anthem actually has congregation participation. That is printed on the insert on the other side from uh, the, the list of the names of the confirmands. Uh, at the Lamb's High Feast we sing. It's a familiar text to many of us, but it's a different tune. You'll see that uh, stanzas one, two, and four are sung by all, so that includes the congregation, and then stanza three will be sung by the choir only. This morning in the prayers, we mark some commemorations. Uh, yesterday, May 1st, was the feast of St. Philip and St. James the Apostles. Uh, these, and they were martyred for their faith in Christ. Uh, these are different uh, men from, from the ones we we might hear about otherwise. Philip, uh, the deacon, is mentioned in our first reading today in the book of Acts. Well, this was Philip the apostle, and then uh, James, the son of Zebedee and brother of John. Uh, it's not that James. This is James the less or James the younger. Uh, and and uh, so these two uh, apostles we remember today, yesterday, uh, and we commemorate them in the prayers. And then also today, uh, from the year 373, Athanasius of Alexandria, who was a bishop in that city in Egypt and a doctor of the church. Please uh, be sure to fill out attendance cards and uh, if you are communing, communion registration, uh, and then uh, uh, turn those in in the basket uh, on the table at the sanctuary entrance as you go. Um, online attendees, please fill out the online attendance form. Uh, and after the service, then the confirmands will be lined up uh, in the narthex uh, for you to greet them and uh, give them your, your congratulations and your blessings for them. Uh, our hymn of invocation, please rise and face the processional cross at the entrance to the sanctuary and continue facing it. The first five stanzas of Salvation Unto Us Has Come, hymn 555. <laughs>
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who make the minds of your faithful to be of one will, grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first reading for the fifth Sunday of Easter is from the book of Acts, the eighth chapter. An angel of the Lord appeared, said to Philip, rise and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and went. And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning seated in his chariot, and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, do you understand what you are reading? And he said, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, About whom, I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning with this scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop. And they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away. And the eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he passed through, he preached the gospel to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks.
1 John, the fourth chapter. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, and every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them, for he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the gospel for this day, the Lord says to his disciples, Abide, remain in me, and I in you. I am the vine, you are the branches. What Jesus says here remains true for every one of his disciples, every one of his catechumens. What is a catechumen? It's someone who is receiving catechesis who is being instructed in the faith of Christ, the teaching of our triune God in Christ. When is that catechesis supposed to end? Let's ask this question instead. Who knows the Christian teaching, the faith of Christ, so well that he no longer needs to study and learn it? That person no longer needs to be a catechumen. Raise hands if anybody is at that point. No? Well, none of us know it that well. Only the Lord himself and perhaps the saints in glory. We learn the six chief parts of the Christian teaching symbolized on that red banner as found in Martin Luther's small catechism, the Ten Commandments, the three articles of the Creed, the Lord's Prayer, Baptism, Confession, and the Lord's Supper. Luther said of the chief parts and the catechism, I must still read and study them daily, yet I cannot master the catechism as I wish. But I must remain a child and pupil of the catechism, and I am glad to remain so. The truth is, as Christians, we are all lifelong catechumens. In this life, on this side of heaven, learning the things of God never stops. Well, if it never ends, then why bother with the rite of confirmation? God made us humans to be creatures of ritual, to observe times and seasons and occasions. It's one reason why he placed the sun and moon and stars in the heavens. As the one confirmation banner says, the moon and stars you have placed. And God says in Genesis 1, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. One such sign and day, of course, was the feast of the nativity of our Lord, Christmas. Christ's coming in the flesh was made known to some Gentiles by the appearing of a stellar sign in the sky that led them to the Christ child. Think of the rite of confirmation like another feast of our Lord that we will soon celebrate, the ascension of our Lord. On the 40th day from his resurrection from the dead, Jesus visibly ascended into heaven in the sight of his disciples. He was no longer visibly present with his church on earth, but he was not absent. His ascension is a transition for the church, a transformation of his presence. Instead of being in one location, the flesh and blood Jesus is everywhere with his church through his means of grace. Wherever his word is purely preached and taught and wherever his sacraments are rightly administered, Jesus is there. He always had been everywhere, even during his earthly ministry. Now the reality of his unseen yet constant presence had to be lived in the life of the church. Confirmation is a transition for catechumens. Jesus' ascension meant that now his apostles had to mature, putting into practice what they had learned from him to grow his church. Confirmation means that now you catechumens being confirmed have to mature, putting into practice what you have learned of Christ. The apostles didn't stop grow growing deeper in their knowledge of the faith of Christ until they departed this life. We don't stop growing either. A vine keeps growing as long as it's alive. You know, some vines get twisted, very twisted, so that they tangle and strangle everything around them. That's what wild grape vines do. Their grapes are thick-skinned and sour, so they're no good for eating or making wine. Jesus says, I am the vine, the true one, 
and my father is the vine dresser. You see a vine dresser on the bulletin cover. He's the one who tends the vine and prunes it so that it bears more fruit. He looks like a farmer. In fact, that is the meaning of the Greek word at the end of verse 1. Georgos, earth worker, farmer. Jesus says that God the Father is the farmer. Well, he did plant the Garden of Eden, and he got his hands in the dirt to make the first man. This is also one of Jesus' I am statements, a teaching about his own divine being and power. As a vine gives life to its branches, so he gives life to his disciples. He is the true vine. That is, he is the good vine, the vine of his father's planting, bearing good fruit. We see on one banner, young and good vine with the cross, the tree on which Christ suffered and died to take away our sins and give us life. The vine and the tree, two pictures of our life-giving Lord Jesus. He says that his father prunes every branch that does bear fruit, that it may bear more fruit. Literally, Jesus says that the father cleans every branch. He also says, already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Like weeding, pruning isn't a fun task. But the farmer knows it's necessary to keep the vine healthy. Otherwise, it will keep growing in any and all directions, like a wild vine, and some of that growth will be unfruitful, robbing the fruitful branches of energy needed to bear more fruit. The Apostle John is the author of this gospel, and he also wrote our epistle reading for today. There he cautions us, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. We know the Spirit of God because he speaks the truth. He reminds us of all that Christ has said and done. The scriptures are his word, and we learn the truth by hearing and studying his word. Anyone who denies Jesus Christ or who teaches a different Christ, that person is a false prophet and a liar with a spirit of error. If you get caught up in some false teaching, then the Father will prune you as necessary. Pruning is cleaning the branches of the vine. How are we clean? By hearing the truth, the word of Christ. So keep coming and keep hearing his word. It is another banner, as another banner says, send forth your light and your truth, let them guide me. And the verse ends, let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Here is the holy hill of God, and this is his dwelling, where he shines in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life, and I am the light of the world. Walking the way of Christ means to walk the way of the cross. Another banner says, take up your cross. As Jesus says, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Jesus took up his cross to take away the sin of the world. He took our punishment. By his death and his rising again, we are absolved, forgiven. And we are justified, declared righteous by God for the sake of Christ. In telling us to take up our crosses, Jesus is saying, die to yourself. Put your old sinful self to death every day. The old Adam in you keeps coming back to life, but he must be drowned and die with all sins and evil desires. And that's okay. In truth, it's the greatest thing that can happen to you, to have your old self die. 
then a new you comes to life. How and where is old Adam drowned? How and where is the new you brought to life? By the triune God, Father and Son and Holy Spirit, in holy baptism, God's great work and promise for you in the water and the word. As on one the water and the word, with symbols of the triune God and the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life. In this new life from God, this new life in Christ, you are being made new into the likeness of Jesus Christ. Four Old Testament prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Zechariah, foretold the coming of someone called the branch. Through Zechariah, the Lord says, Behold the man whose name is the branch. Behold, I will bring my... This branch is Jesus Christ. But now in today's gospel, what does he say? I am the vine. You are the branches. You, Christian, are a branch to, in Christ, the great branch. What honor he bestows on you to call you by one of his names. He calls you to be his likeness and his presence in the world, to be his witness. We see just such a witness in today's first reading. Philip was one of the seven deacons appointed by the apostles at the church in Jerusalem to help with the care of widows and the poor. And they also preached and taught. An angel sent Philip out on the road where he met the chariot of an Ethiopian eunuch who had been in Jerusalem to worship. He was returning home to Ethiopia where he served as treasurer to the queen of Ethiopia. As he was reading the prophet Isaiah, Philip explained to him that Isaiah's prophecy was about the suffering of Jesus. And beginning with this scripture, Philip told him the good news, the gospel about Jesus. Philip catechized the Ethiopian in the faith of Christ and then baptized him. After the Spirit carried Philip away, the Ethiopian returned home with the joy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The first person from his country chosen to receive the gospel was the royal treasurer. And now he had the greatest treasure of all. You also are a royal treasurer. You are a treasurer of whatever goods that your king, the Lord Jesus, has put into your care and custody. They are his goods, loaned for your use. And he calls you to return a portion in thanksgiving to him. Your generous God provides you with all you need and more. When you give back generously to him, he blesses you still more. Above all, in his great treasure, the gospel, he gives you his kingdom and his life and all that is his and eternity with him, guaranteed. When you bear fruit for Christ, when you let his light shine through you, when you are a witness for him, there will be those who don't want you to talk about Jesus or they'll want you to change what you say about him. On this day, the church remembers Athanasius, a bishop in Alexandria, Egypt, from the 4th century. Another Alexandrian of that time, Arius, taught that Jesus was not one God with the Father, but rather that he was the highest of God's creations. He popularized his teaching, his false teaching, with some popular hymns. The Emperor Constantine didn't like this because it meant that there would not be peace in the empire. So he called for a church council to be held in the city of Nicaea, in what is now Turkey, to settle the matter. Most of the bishops agreed with Athanasius that scripture says Jesus is true man and true God, one God with the Father and the Holy Spirit. The Nicene Council came up with an early, shorter version of the Nicene Creed. Arius' false teaching was condemned, 
but it still remained popular in many places. Five times Athanasius was forced to flee Alexandria, yet he remained faithful in his confession of Christ. 1 Peter 3.15 says, In your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. There was a saying about Athanasius, Athanasius contra mundum, Athanasius against the world. His cause seemed hopeless, the whole world against him. Yet he held fast to the only true hope for the world, Christ Jesus. And because of his faithful defense of the true faith, we are among his many spiritual descendants. One of the church's great creeds is named after him because with it we confess the same faith as Athanasius. Athanasius points you to Christ. Luther points you to Christ. Patriarchs and prophets, apostles and evangelists all point you to Christ. Many faithful witnesses point us to Christ. Abide in him, and he shall abide in you. His Father will delight in you and dwell with you, and his Spirit will abide in your heart and mind to keep you in the truth. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds by his Spirit in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, I invite our confirmants to come forward. And the congregation may follow the rite of confirmation beginning on page 272 in Lutheran Service Book. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You have been baptized and catechized in the Christian faith according to our Lord's bidding. Jesus said, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day, in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Do you renounce the devil? Do you renounce all his works? Do you renounce all his ways? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? Do you confess the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church drawn from the scriptures as you have learned to know it from the small catechism to be faithful and true? 
Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word and deed, to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and have received the teaching of the Lord. You have confessed the faith and been absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament, he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I also invite the parents of each confirmand to come forward as the, that confirmand is brought forward so that you may, and you may lay your hand on the shoulder. Jacob Matthew Fratzel, the almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Jesus said, and as for the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was said to you by God? I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He is not God of the dead, but of the living. Matthew 23, 31 and 32. Blake Michael Gruber, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Your way, O God, is holy. What God is great like our God? You are the God who works wonders. You have made known your might among the peoples. Psalm 77, 13 and 14. Liliana Francis Johnson, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. To all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. John 1, 12 and 13. Dominic James LaBelle, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. And to the Son of Man was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. Daniel 7, 14. Samantha Wamboy Nanga, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. We preach Christ crucified. 
1 Corinthians 1, 18 and 23. Sawyer, Jason, Nietzsche, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. The Lord said, I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with ability and intelligence, with knowledge and all craftsmanship, to devise artistic designs. Exodus 31, 3 and 4. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your sons and daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that bringing forth the fruits of faith, they may continue steadfast and victorious to the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise and bless you that by the water and the word you have grafted Bailey Janelle Landis and all your believers into your Son, the true and good vine. By your word and spirit, clean us and cut us off from all sin and dead works that we may live from Christ and produce the fruits of faith and good works. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, whose only Son came in the flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior, protect us from all false teaching and the spirit of the Antichrist, that we may always confess Christ to be our only true God and remain faithful to him. Lord, in your mercy. Father and teacher of all truth, guide teachers and catechumens in your word that they may increase in understanding, faith, and love of Christ. Receive our thanks for your spirit's guidance to Nancy Jankowski to lead her to continue serving among us. Bless our teachers and grant them continued strength and faithfulness in their work. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Almighty God, give health and guidance to our public servants that they may serve honorably and in accord with your good order. Defend from every danger our armed forces, law enforcement, and emergency services, granting them courage and honor as they serve to protect and defend us. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Merciful God, you hear and answer your children in their hour of need. Grant healing to Susan Palo Cherween, Addison Jones, Aris Penicus, Arlene Kraft, Jamie Sabisky, John Palo, and Pamela Webb. Bestow your peace upon Lydia Bush and Karen Randall as they adjust to their new homes. Give aid, as you know best, to Danny and her husband and their unborn baby, to Renee and her unborn baby, to Sylvia, Archie, Michael, George, and Donna, Harry, Maxie, Michael, Linda, and Rebecca, to Mildred, Paul, Shirley, Bob, and Steve, Ed, Brenda, Timmy, Jack, and Jean, to Donna, Lee, Glenn, Jackie, and Alina, Grant that they would bear their crosses with faith, ever looking to you, and so fix their hearts where true joy is found. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. O God, you are love, and always reveal your love through your Son. Grant that all who come to your feast of love may worthily eat of Christ's body and blood, so that whoever abides in this love forever abides in you, and you in him. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. O God of truth and mercy, you upheld your servant Athanasius to confess with boldness the one holy Catholic and apostolic faith against all hostility and resistance. Uphold your church, all her servants, and her catechumens and confirmands in the confession of this same faith, trusting solely in the grace of your eternal word, who took upon himself our humanity that we might share his divinity. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, whose Son revealed himself to Philip and James and gave them the knowledge of everlasting life, grant us perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way and the truth and the life, and steadfastly to walk in the way that leads to eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
a couple of announcements before we continue with the service of the sacrament. Uh, for Teacher Appreciation Week, we ask especially our members to sign the giant uh, teacher appreciation card in the narthex uh, for our teachers. And uh, uh, Hope School this week has uh, its invention convention fairs on Monday, kindergarten through second, Tuesday, third through fifth grade, and Wednesday, sixth through eighth grades. And this coming Saturday is our service of confession and communion at 10 a.m. The Lord be with you. up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the very Paschal Lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sins of the world, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glory and praise you and say... Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repented joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and and his commitment. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the feast of calamity, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
the body and blood of our Lord strengthen and preserve you and keep you steadfast in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace and joy. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
Christ is risen.